ataxia telangiectasia is the uh, topic in our abbreviated AT. And uh, ataxia telangiectasia is basically a, a pediatric uh, disorder. And the three fundamental aspects of it are ataxia, which is poor gait, telangiectasia, a big long word, which essentially are small uh, dilated blood vessels. And they can appear either on the conjunctiva or on the skin. And then there's this, the third component is the sinopulmonary infections, which uh, can occur recurrently. Now, what is the reason this is happening? Well, AT occurs because there's a mutation in a protein called ATM protein. And this ATM protein is involved in the, um, detecting DNA damage and controlling the rate of uh, cell growth and division. Now when this protein has a mutation, what will happen is the rate of cell growth and division is not properly conducted and that will allow cells to proliferate and that can lead to cancer. So these items I wanted to quickly uh, point out. Now in addition to that, you also have uh, deficiencies of B and T cells and that leads to a deficiency in uh, immunoglobins and the key ones are IgA and IgE. Uh, this one is by far the most. 80% of patients with AT uh, will have uh, IgA deficiency. So let's get into some of the symptoms. So we talked about ataxia. Well ataxia, what is that? That's basically a gait problem. Unsteady gait, poor gait. And this is the first uh, symptom that will occur usually is noticed when the child starts to uh, develop a walking and now uh, you can see that the next one is the big long word telangiectasia and I encourage you to look this up on the internet to see what this looks like they're basically small blood vessels uh, small dilated blood vessels and uh, they can appear on the skin or they can appear on the conjunctiva and they're pretty characteristic. The third thing that can happen is the sinopulmonary infections and the reason this happens is because you have a weak immune system and the weak immune system characterized by the B and T cell uh, defects and the lack of immunoglobins such as IgA and IgE. And then I touched on this earlier, uh, there's a large number of cases that can progress to cancer because that ATM protein has uh, a mutation in it and doesn't allow proper uh, control of the rate of cell growth and division. So how do you diagnose this? Well, a lot of it is clinical, you know, the symptoms and the presentation, but you can measure the levels of IgA, and these will be low. You can also measure something called alpha, alpha fetoprotein. And alpha fetoprotein, for reasons unknown, um, are, are high. It's just one of those things that's associated with this uh, disease. And then another thing you can test are um, a karyotype. And what this shows is actually very interesting. It shows that that ATM protein that normally detects DNA damage um, obviously is not working properly because you will see these chromosomal breaks. It's very highly specific, but um, these are some of the key diagnostic tests. And the treatment, well, the treatment basically 
it's kind of limited. You replace the immun immunoglobulins um, that the patient lacks intravenously, and then you treat the uh, sinopulmonary infections with antibiotics. So it's still unfortunately very limited uh, as to how you can treat it. So let's look at some clinical vignettes. Four-year-old girl is brought to the office by her mother because of skin lesions on the face and arms. She noticed them first on the eyeballs and then on the cheeks and the elbow crease. They do not appear to bother the patient. The child's medical history is significant for a gait disorder that began when she started to walk and progressively worsened and for recurrent sinopulmonary and skin infections. She now has an awkward swaying gait with choreic and athetoid movements. On exam, there are multiple non-blanching dilated blood vessels present on the bulbar conjunctivas, on the nose and on the cheeks, and anticubital fossa. The child is drooling and has erythematous scaly patches with thick purulent crusts on the corners of the mouth. Which of the following is most likely diagnosis? Well, they put everything together. All these skin lesions, these dilated blood vessels, that's telangiectasia. And then there's this whole bunch of stuff about her gait disorder, and that's basically ataxia. And then they're talking about recurrent sinopulmonary infections, which is definitely part of that disorder. So it's all spelled out for you. Choice A. And then finally, a four-year-old child is evaluated by a neurologist because of difficulty walking. Neurologic uh, exam documents ataxia, mental to retardation, the neurologist notes the presence of multiple telangiectasias involving the conjunctiva, ears, and anticubital fossa. The child also has a history of multiple respiratory tract infections. Immunoglobin studies on the child would most likely demonstrate an absence of which of the following? Well, another very good question. Uh, the most common one, 80% of patients with AT, will have IgA. So that's without a doubt the most common one. So you can eliminate uh, these ones since it doesn't even include IgA. So now you're down to A and B. And it's a tough one. A lot of these immunoglobins are uh, involved, but if you look at which one other than IgA, the next one is IgE. And that's unfortunately just something you just have to memorize. So the answer would be choice A.